Okay, welcome back. This is section 5-6. We're still talking about solving quadratic equations, and now we're going to talk about the fourth and final method of solving quadratic equations, and this is the famed quadratic formula. Now, there's kind of a good news, bad news situation with the quadratic formula. The good news is this method is going to work every time. For any quadratic that I ever give you, you can use the quadratic formula and find its solutions. Here's the bad news if you've never seen the quadratic formula before. It's kind of a mess. So, here's what it says. If ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, notice what you have here is you have a quadratic equation. This is in what we call standard form, so you have to get one side equal to zero again. Once you do that, we're going to use the values of a, b, and c to get the quadratic formula. I'm actually going to show you in class how we derive that. It comes from completing the square, which is kind of a cool little math fact, and we're going to work through that in class. But for right now, let me give you the formula. It looks like this. x equals negative b plus or minus the quantity, I'm sorry, the square root of the quantity, b squared minus 4ac. This whole thing is underneath the square root sign then that entire quantity, the negative b plus minus root b squared minus 4ac, is all divided by 2a. This whole formula we can use, plugging in values of a, b, and c, and get the two different answers for x. Now notice this plus minus, we're going to add the square root of b squared minus 4ac to negative b, and we're also going to subtract it from negative b. That's where we get our two answers, because remember, quadratics, 99 times out of 100, will have two separate solutions. Okay? To make your life easy as we get going, on my website, and I'll have some copies as well in class, I created a little graphic organizer to help you go through this formula. Now, I can't guarantee that you're going to be able to use this on every test and quiz, but to at least get started, this is a nice way to keep your work organized. I think that's the only part of the quadratic formula that can be tricky, is keeping the work organized, making sure you're following all the order of operations properly in order to get the correct answer. Okay, so I was able to put pictures of my graphic organizer on the slides here, and we'll work through some problems that way. So here's the first example. Okay, and you can follow along with this graphic organizer too. It's the same document that's on my website. You can download and print out a copy, or you can do this in your notes as well. So we have x squared plus 6x equals 16. We want to solve for x. Well, we notice this is not in standard form. So we have to subtract 16 from both sides of the equation in order to get the one side equal to 0. So in standard form, we have x squared plus 6x minus 16 equals 0. From here, then, we can just pull out the values for the coefficients. So a is 1, b is 6, and c is negative 16. And what's great about the quadratic formula is these three numbers are the only numbers we're going to use from here on out in the problem. So let's plug them in. We have negative 6 plus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 16. Okay, so we'll take the negative of 6. Oh, and over 2 times 1. I forgot to fill that part in. So we have the negative of 6, negative 6. And then we've got to figure out all this stuff that's inside this radical becomes one number. So we do 36 plus 64 equals 100, because notice you've got two negatives here, so this becomes plus. That's the other thing you've got to be a little bit careful about, is some of the signs for this 4ac, this minus 4ac. Again, over 2 times 1. Okay, so now we'll take the square root of 100, and that's 10. So we have negative 6 plus 10 over 2, or negative 6 minus 10 over 2. And then we just follow through what the graphic organizer says to do. We calculate each numerator, so negative 6 plus 10 is 4, Negative 6 minus 10 is negative 16. Then we do 4 divided by 2 is 2. And negative 16 divided by 2 is 8. Our two answers are x is 2 and x is 8. It is just that simple. Okay, let's look at another one. 3x squared plus 1 equals negative 5x. Okay, so again, this is not in standard form, but if we add 5x to both sides we will get an equation in standard form. Okay, now we can work with the a, the b, and the c. So a is 3, b is 5, and c is 1. So let's pop all that into the equation. 
So we have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times 1. So let's work with that radical first. So we can carry down the 5 and the 3, because we haven't done anything yet according to our graphic organizer. But now we have to take care of what's inside the radical. So 5 squared is 25. And then 4 times 3 times 1 is 12. So we get 13. So that's what goes inside the radical, 13. Okay, now 13 is a prime number. So we're going to have irrational numbers here as our, as our solutions. So I'm going to show you the two ways you can do that. You can keep it as an irrational number, keep it in exact form, in which case you're actually pretty much done the problem, or you can go to your calculator and you can approximate and get a decimal. So we, well, we kind of just fill everything in for the next step because you can't take the square root of 13, at least not with a whole number, because 13 is not a perfect square. So we get negative 5 plus root 13 over 6, and negative 5 minus root 13 over 6. And then again, these are the exact answers. If you wanted to, you could stop right here. You could even write it in some books, and if you check answers in the back of your textbook sometimes, they will write it like that just as one compact thing. Negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 6. Now if you wanted to, you could go to your calculator and approximate this. And that's what I'm going to do down here to finish the graphic organizer. Okay. Again, it all depends on the problem, it all depends on the context. If we're talking about maybe a word problem, and maybe this function's modeling time, the time it takes for, I don't know, a baseball to hit the ground, and you probably would want an exact value. You probably would want to say 8.126 seconds as opposed to saying, oh, 5 plus root 13 seconds. Because we can't quite visualize what that means in the real world. But again, know your audience, know what the problem is asking in order to be successful. So negative 5 plus root 13 is negative 1.39. So I'll put that in, in my numerator on the left. And negative 5 minus root 13 is negative 8.61. So I'll put that in on the right. I rounded to two decimal places for these. And then I just divide, so I get approximately x is negative 0.232, or x is approximately negative 1.435. See how easy this is? Use the graphic organizer definitely to start off, follow your nose, go through each step, and you'll be successful and you'll have this down pat in no time. We're going to try one more example. Okay, so this one is x squared minus 4x equals negative 13. All right, again, not in standard form, but we'll put it in standard form. x squared minus 4x plus 13 equals 0. Oh, by the way, so none of my examples have done this, but I'm sure someone will ask this in class. If one of the three terms wasn't in the problem, like let's say it was just x squared plus 13 equals 0, then that would just mean we could still do it. We would just have to make whatever term is not in the problem a 0. We would just make, in that case, b 0. Okay, and we might look at some like that in class just to get the habit of what happens if we're missing a term. But for this example, we have a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is 13. So we'll plug all that in. Negative, negative 4. Watch the double negative. Something special will happen there. Plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13 all over 2 times 1. And we'll carry that down because... We're not doing anything yet on the graphic organizer there. So negative negative 4 becomes positive 4. And then we've got to do a little bit of work to the side to figure out what's going on in the radicand, which is the thing inside the square root. So we get 16 minus 52, and that's negative 36. So this is 4 plus or minus square root of negative 36 over 2 times 1. And a little flag should be going off. Some siren should be going off in your head. I'm doing the square root of a negative number. We are going to have to go into our realm of imaginary numbers to simplify this square root, but it can be done. So the square root of positive 36 is 6, but the square root of negative 36 is going to be 6i. So we'll put that in at our top. So we have 4 plus 6i and 4 minus 6i, and both of those are over 2. All right, so we can't approximate a value here because it's i. It's an imaginary number. Our calculators only deal with real numbers. But what we can do is we can simplify this a little bit further to get us a nice answer. Notice how the 4 and the 6 are both even numbers. They both have a GCF of 2. So let's factor out a 2 from both of those terms. And we get 2 times the quantity 2 plus 3i over 2. 
and 2 times the quantity 2 minus 3i over 2. Now you look, you have factors of 2 on the top and the bottoms of both of these fractions. So let's cancel them. So we get 2 plus 3i and 2 minus 3i. Or like I said before, if you want to write it more elegantly, x equals 2 plus or minus 3i. That's it. It's just that simple. I have some example problems that I want you to try at the bottom here. You can use the graphic organizer if you want or not. Um, some will have nice numbers, some will have some irrationals, some will be imaginary. Just go through. If you need to watch any of these problems again, that's what the video is here for. Otherwise, I'll see you in class tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit more about the quadratic formula and we'll do a little more practice. Have a good evening.